Alright, so we're back to that chicken and rice, veggies, obviously the full fat mayo, and I got my sweet potato, chickpeas, and broccoli, bit of seasoning. Uh, it's all in all about probably close to 600 calories, 650. And I've got a coffee coming underway. Yes, a bit of sugar in there as well. No. I just spilled my calories everywhere. Definitely gonna lick it up, mate. Alrighty, one of my examples that I wanted to compare the calories with and the sizes of food. Now, both these meals weigh the same. You know? So this is gluten-free muesli and Greek yogurt. And this is a bit of chicken halot and pumpkin. Now, the yogurt and muesli is 550 calories and the halot and chicken and pumpkin is 400 calories. All right, so this is also sitting at about five gram of fat, 30 gram of protein, 40 gram of carb. And this one is sitting 15 gram of fat, so 10 grams more, 20 grams protein, so 10 grams less, and 80 gram carb. Of course, with this meal, I'm eating both, but what I'm trying to get at is the size isn't always everything. It is what's in it as well, so that's what you gotta be careful of. Fats are gonna accumulate calories a lot quicker. And with this one, we've got more protein, so that's the majority of the reason. My favorite place. I'm getting a salad. He's getting a burger. burger. Simon says. Yeah, boy. I used to be my favorite burger until it became gluten free. Best thing about the grill that knocks is they got the best stuff ever. What the? <laughs> Well, I've come along just fine. Week number five. Three weeks to go. Starting to get full. Actually starting to get tired. And yeah. Thank God that it's uh, winter so I can actually rug up and uh, hide this mess. But fill in just everywhere. I'm actually like, I can't even suck my gut in anymore. Like I'm just that full. Love handles, wow! So much fat. My back. I used to be able to fold that like that. That is a solid, that is just fat. <laughs> that is fat. Week five. Just finished up my shop. And just those two bags cost me about 76 bucks. Got to say one thing about trying to eat healthier, at least clean or buy organic stuff. It is expensive, but definitely worth it as well. Also, I think pre-buying your food and not eating out as much is definitely a lot cheaper. I uh, actually found out I was eating out about maybe six times a week. Uh, and obviously buying all my food as well. If I was bulking, I'd be eating about 4,000 calories, which is still a bit, but lean bulking for me. Uh, and I was spending about 28 grand a year on food, just for myself. So pretty hefty. But that's where planning comes in. Obviously, like my meals and stuff were all planned. Uh, but when you plan what to eat, you won't overeat, therefore spend unnecessary money and you won't get fat. Uh, when you indulge and spend more money than you need to and eat more than you need to you may put on excess fat and well yeah you're wasting money time energy effort health fitness so yeah plan your food eat healthy to win-win <laughs> it's a it's 110 kilos. Just finished up at jump deck with the fam. That was so much cardio, I'm gonna have to eat an extra dinosaur. Food. Nah, but serious, extra food. Gotta make up them calories. Can't not be getting fat now. 
One thing I've got to say people got to look out for is juices. Juice is fantastic. I mean, it's fruit and if you get some veggies in it, even better. But a lot of the juices these days that are packaged and everything have added not only preservatives, but sugar in it as well. Sugar that you don't need, all right? So fruit already has sugar and uh, all of its amazing benefits. But as soon as you start putting other stuff in it, the quality of the juice dies. Um, and yeah, obviously it's filled with crap. So just be wary of that. More sugar, more calories. Yogurt's healthy, they ask. Yes, yes it is healthy. But it's also high in calories because of the fat. So be careful. Portion size is key. <laughs> that moment when people are like, Michael, are you putting on weight? Yes, exactly. I'm doing a fat log where I'm showing people that you can put on weight by eating healthy food. Ah, uh, of course you are. No, 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 seriously. <laughs> doing it for work. Oh yes, you're not just becoming a fat tard. Now to have dinner, come home, witness my sister preparing her little fish containers of nuts. But I shouldn't be bragging because I'll be doing this soon. And look what she gets. What do I get? Sweet potato. Chicken. And that. For those of you who are bulking, <clears throat> It is very, very good to pretty much throw in carbs every day, all day, and as consistently as possible. All right, so that's gonna get the, the hormone insulin right up there. All right, another reason uh, for getting that spike in the drop for having sugars and stuff, but if we keep carbohydrates high all day, every day, it's gonna keep insulin high. Insulin's pretty much the gatekeepers to our muscle cells and also fat cells, so that's where the fat storing can come from. But uh, being the gatekeepers to our muscle cells also means that our muscles are going to get nutrients um, and recover from all the damage that we do over training. And especially if it's thrown in with some protein, quality chicken and everything else, protein shakes or what have you, whatever your choice of protein is, uh, it's going to repair those muscles nice. Now, if you're trying to cut fat, you're trying, your aim is to keep insulin at bay or low as possible. All right, so things like low GI, or have parts of the day where you actually don't have carbs because that's your fat burning opportunity. All right, you cannot burn fat while insulin is high. All right, quick fact for you. Yeah. I'll probably definitely be cutting out dairy, as like you can see, my skin is just, yeah. And like all the excess calories as well, I think calories don't know where to go, so they're like, coming out my skin or something. We're going to get some of these bad boys in as well. And, you know, I'll give you a few clippets of uh, what I get up to on the weekend. All right, almost three weeks left. I'm getting so tired lately. I've got three and a half weeks left of this overeating. I'm going to start calling it hell as much as I was enjoying it at the start. Yeah, I'm so tired. And if anyone feels like they're getting tired while they're... I mean, sometimes you might not even know that you're overeating, but I don't know, food can do that. It's not always energy. Your food can also be bad. just want to make a quick vlog about these bad boys or just protein shakes in general that are pre-packaged. Okay, a lot of them are going to contain a lot of carbohydrates, aka most likely sugar, uh, because obviously from a manufacturing point of view, it's a lot cheaper than adding natural sources of carbohydrates. Now, what that means is it's also going to spike your insulin as well. I mean, in a protein shake, it's good, but only after gym. Now, this is like one of the times I'd recommend to actually having high GI foods. I wouldn't ever recommend just having sugar, like more go for your natural sources of sugar, like your fruit. But in terms of, yeah, sugar, mainly when you wake up and post-gym. That's the only time. See, it can be misled to thinking protein shakes are amazing, at least the pre-packaged ones, that's what I'm talking about. Always look at the back of the pack to see if it's got sugar in it. Uh, if it does, you're probably better off going a simple way with absolute minimal carbohydrates, something like one to two grams per serve, which is almost next to nothing, 
and it's got majority of protein which is what you want and then you can pretty much have your natural sources of carbohydrates whether it be high or low GI after workout. So to sum that up as quick as I can, pretty much if you're trying to bulk, these are fine. Uh, still do try, just get your simple whey if you can and then add in your natural sources of carbohydrates. If you're cutting, do not have these or any packaged protein shakes with sugar, okay? Get your plain foods if you can, even avoid uh, protein shakes, but if you really need to get your protein uh, up there, then yeah, protein shakes with that minimal, uh, something like a weight isolate. Good. Two weeks off from finishing my fat log, I'm going to give you a quick preview on how we're doing. So, I've completely lost my abs, just fat has everywhere, these mad love handles, chest fills in, no veins left. Hope, uh, Hope to get it all back um, in the eight weeks that I cut again, and I'll show you exactly how I do it. Ugh, I was tensing, can't even get my abs back. Currently sitting at about 113 kilos, and I started this fat log at about 104 kilos. So only one kilo off, and I got two weeks left, uh, which is going to be really fun. I just picked myself up a Magnum. So it is. And then to weekend and uh, Sunday night, so I thought I'd treat myself. Now, some of you may not do this all the time, and you think it's completely fine, and it is. But I know I'm in a caloric uh, surplus. Now, what I'm about to do and eat an ice cream, uh, I know I'm going to be pretty much putting on fat. I'm in an excess already, and I'm about to give myself a high dose of. GI sugary carbohydrates it's gonna spike my insulin and pretty much tuck those carbs away for later because I'm in an excess and yeah my body's thinking why not so yeah when you think uh, just uh, having a simple ice cream uh, to finish the weekend or finish the night not too bad try maybe make it just after dinner um, even limit it to maybe one a week sometimes people do this every night and they have dessert something sugary that's exactly what's happening you're spiking your insulin and if you're in an excess of calories or a surplus over the whole day well you're most likely going to be putting on fat and it just accumulates over time so just be wary and that's either limit yourself or just be careful on what you eat and or really just choose the right desserts and what to have this is honestly my favorite meal the good old chicken and rice and there's a bit of sweet potato in there too there we go. I have a week and a half left yes I'm getting sick of food kind of not really but I am I've hit 114 so that's my 10 kilos but I did say to you at the start 10 kilos plus so as much as I don't want to gain any more weight and any more fat I will still keep eating uh, about 5,000 calories. So remember, I, I didn't um, think I was going to make uh, the kilos, so I upped the calories to 6,000. So now I think I can slow down just a little bit. So I'm just, oh, I spilled my peanut butter everywhere! Anyway, so I've slowed down a little bit. I'm still having like my uh, peanut butter and toast and everything, but my, le um, my meals are a little leaner, um, which I will do. So I'm altering as I go, but look, I'm still fat, okay? I got fat for you guys. Only a week and a half left, and then I'm going to show you how to lose it all. Week seven, guys. Only one week left, and this is what we're left with. Clearly no veins left. I feel like I've got a pop for a gut. Love handles like you wouldn't believe. Never had so much fat in this one section. It's ridiculous. Even the mids of my thighs are rubbing and it's very, very uncomfortable. One week left and sitting at about 114 now. So we've actually reached that 10 kilo mark and I'll see what else we can do in this extra week. And then finally the cut. So, we just got back from Melinda Falls. All my favorite clients have made it back. Their energy levels seem fine and I'm far. Look, see, he's not even panting. Not even panting. 
everyone else is fine. I'm just logging how I feel absolutely screwed because of my excess weight and eating sugar. Let's do it again. I'm feeling that tired at the moment. I was actually that close to pulling the pin. Feeling just so sluggish, so crap about myself. Um, obviously put on fat in places I never wanted to bloody see fat. Uh, but yeah, going for that trail walk just before with all my clients, I got there and they said uh, they thought I looked stoned or at least I was really tired and as you can probably tell, massive bags under my eyes, it's obviously my body's feeling it, I'm not just, it's not all in my head, um, yeah, just feeling really sluggish. And that is a wrap guys, this is the last day of my fat log so i'm going to give you a preview on what it'll look like soon uh, but as for now i'm pretty much writing my diet plan this is my last allowance so 5232 calories 183 gram protein 798 grams of carbs and 145 gram of fat that's all that's obviously going to change i'll show you in a second what it's going to be Tapping guys, so this is what we have. The eight weeks in full. I think the, the weight gain actually slowed down towards the end. But yeah, this is definitely what we have. So nice and bulky. Actually feel a little bit flabby, like the insides of my legs even hurt as well just because my thighs are kind of rubbing together because I have increased weight. Oh, there's my gut sticks out now as well. And yeah, it's filled in everywhere and obviously like my arms, they just look, they do look thick but yeah, there's no real good shape to them I guess, because obviously the fat fills in everywhere and as soon as you start getting leaner, you do look almost bigger because your muscles aren't divided like I've said in the previous videos. So this is it guys, the end of the eight weeks. And I'm actually sitting at 115 kilos, all right? So I put on 11 kilos for you guys, eating reasonably healthy food, and we'll jump across to the conclusion soon, but the bulk, the end. Hope you guys enjoyed. Now we're gonna get shredded. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. So this is it, guys. I actually got to 115 kilos for you guys. Put on a tremendous, tremendous amount of fat. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had so much fat around like my hip region. Oh, it is so uncomfortable and I've never been so excited to go on a cut. It is not even funny. So I'm that pumped. It's already Monday. So from doing this video, today was the first day of doing the cut and I'm just I'm hungry, but I'm that excited to get it done and smash it out for you guys. That's also going to be in the next cutting log, all right? So make sure you keep up to date with that one. <clears throat> As for this log, we're now done. The fat log. I got fat for you guys. I showed you what not to do. In that regard, we're going to go over the conclusion to the end of this video to sum it all up. So pretty much what we have. Point number one. As you can tell, Food can pretty much be the same way and have completely different calories. So let's take two items that are both 100 grams each meal and they could be either half the amount of calories or double the amount of calories. All right, so it's not always portion. All right, it's the calories that's in it that counts. I'm gonna say that eating healthy is very, very expensive, okay? And that's sometimes the unfortunate bit because people look for that quick fix or the cheap alternative and that could be the thing with the preservatives or the thing with the sugar just to get the, the food in and obviously make them uh, not as hungry as they are. But in terms of health, like I've said in the previous videos, you honestly cannot put a price on health and fitness. Uh, so if it's going to save those meds or if it's going to save those shoe inserts because you're overweight and your knees are getting screwed, your hips are getting screwed, your feet are completely out of whack, like what's worth it? And especially the mentality, uh, food is our fuel. It just makes you feel that much better if you're eating the correct foods. So my advice to you is to make sure that you plan, all right? So you're not going to overeat. Right? Overeating is always obviously gonna be more expensive than if you didn't uh, or if you just ate the right foods. Now. If you plan everything 
create a shopping list, go get what you need, and that's that. Done. Especially if you're cutting, well, you don't want to eat, overeat anyway. So just get the food that you need, and you'll also see that in my log, what I do uh, and how to tally up uh, my week worth of food. So in one of the logs, I said, look out for juices. Juices can be so deceiving, it's not funny. So when you say juice to someone, they think healthy. Well, not all the time, all right? Someone down the track screwed it up by adding in preservatives, adding sugar in uh, to make it even cheaper, to pretty much thin out the authenticity of the actual juice that is full of nutrients. So the juice itself now filters down into, let's say, 10% juice, and the rest is just absolute crap garbage that makes it taste even better because of its sugar. All right, so juice tastes amazing, so why not get the real thing? Yes, it's gonna be more expensive, but it's gonna be the real thing. You're gonna get the proper hit of nutrients, and you're gonna get what juice is supposed to do to you. All right, it makes you feel good, and just pretty much gives you what you need and what the body needs in terms of nutrients and vitamins. So just be careful of what juices you buy. Look at the labels, look at uh, the ingredients in it as well. Like, juice is juice. You need to just get whatever the juice is. If it's apple juice, Look at the ingredients. If it's got sugar, don't get it. If it's got a list of preservatives, don't get it. I mean, sometimes you might just need to get the fruit yourself, which is such a better option, and just blend that stuff up and get the juice yourself. All right, point number four. I've already spoken about in some of my previous videos. I'll include a link in the blog so you can follow along. Is keeping your insulin levels high means you're not gonna be burning any fat. Uh, but keeping insulin levels high is still going to allow you to build muscle. Uh, so it is quite important when it comes to building muscle, you need to keep your insulin levels high. Don't go too high with sugary stuff, it's gonna just skyrocket, come plummeting down, and then you're gonna wanna overindulge. But if you can keep it at a steady rate, with protein throughout the day, you're gonna be stacking on those building blocks of muscle. So that insulin is going to open up the pretty much gateways to your muscle cells to allow any nutrients to get in to help them build. All right, so on the alternative to burn fat, if insulin levels are up at all, there is no way you're gonna be burning any fat. So you gotta find those windows where the insulin is either at bay or nothing at all. All right, so no carbs. Carbs is where insulin is stimulated. That's an important one. Carbs is where insulin is stimulated. Protein as well, but not as much, all right? So carbs is where it really comes up nice and high. Point number five, think about your desserts. Think about it. I've spoken about keeping your insulin levels low. What happens when you consume carbohydrates, which majority of desserts are pure sugar and carbohydrates, like ice cream or mousses, anything like that. Majority of the time, it's going to have a lot of sugar in it, or at least just carbohydrate. I haven't really heard of many desserts with high protein content, but just really be wise in when you have your dessert and what you have for dessert because of obviously over time, like I did in the log on Sundays, if I get an ice cream and I'm in an excess of calories, I know that's honestly turning to fat. Point number six. So within the log, I also stated food is not always energy. All right, so sometimes people just go for the food uh, because they feel like they're hungry and the food's gonna give them energy. Now, if you're in an excess, an excess means you're eating over your calorie expenditure. Your calorie expenditure is what your body burns or what your body needs in the day. Now, if you're eating over that, that means your body's already satisfied. All right, it's already got the energy that it needs doing any more, your body still has to process that. You know, so that's almost affecting your body in a way that's not good. It's actually gonna make you feel more tired, pretty much like you witnessed. I mean, I was eating too much for what my body needed, I'm getting fatter, and I felt tired. It was nowhere near energy. I actually felt like crap. Protein powder, or protein shakes in general, any that you find walking out of the gym and you're purchasing, uh, obviously, to build muscle. Now, protein powder between male and female is the biggest misconception that has just been blown out of the water. All right, so, for example, I say to someone, you need protein. I don't want to get big muscles. Well, protein is in things that you eat in your ordinary diet. All right, so like your chicken, poultry, anything like that, eggs. Simply protein powder is going to be a convenience factor to your day to include protein. Right, so you need protein. The body needs protein and fats 
as essential, right? The body has to have that. Carbohydrates comes in at last as not really a necessity, all right? But the protein and fats, that's a necessity. Your body has to have that. I don't have protein powder myself because I get the protein I need through my foods, and if you can do that, I'd highly recommend that. But I simply recommend protein to people that can't actually fit it in the day, but need it because they're not getting it from their diet in general. And lucky last, being heavy is not good. All right, so I put on 11 kilos for you guys, and I went for a walk with my Titan Tone participants up at Linda Falls, and wow, they're on a strict as diet, and I just about carked it. My back was seizing up, my calves were tight, my knees were sore, my feet were sore. My body's obviously not used to being that heavy that quick, and I obviously didn't adjust to it. My cardio was shot. Obviously, eating all that excess calories, I was tired already. Uh, it was, I just did not feel good at all. I did not feel fit, I didn't feel healthy. Um, and this is eating healthy food, all right? So the main topic that I was trying to get at, this is healthy food. So that's a wrap, guys. Thank you so much for following along. I hope you got something out of it. If there was at least a point or two uh, that maybe was a missing piece to your puzzle, I really hope it goes a long way to helping you in your weight loss journey or maintenance journey. I mean, there may be a few things that you're doing right now that you may think is completely normal uh, and they could be hindering your results. I hope you took quite a few points from this. The what not to do, all right? I hope I had laid it all out for you. I did it firsthand for you guys so you didn't have to. All right, so hopefully this way everyone actually listens because of what I've done for everyone else to make sure they listen by doing it firsthand, by showing you the effects it actually has. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So make sure to keep up to date with the cutting log, which is in the next eight weeks. All right, I'm so freaking pumped for this. It's not even funny. Uh, I can't wait to get shredded for you guys and show you the exact opposite things and all the tips and motivation to keep you on track on your weight loss journey. All right, stay tuned guys. I really hope you enjoyed all the parts to these videos and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you liked the video guys. Jump across to our YouTube channel and give that a subscribe to keep up to date on our weekly motivation and tips to help you on your weight loss journey. Also take a look at the videos down below for some humor, some laughs and some free workouts and more motivation. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next video.